planners and bullet journals, art journals, art projects, organized planner sheet. Well, hello, planner babes, and welcome to Organized Planner Chic. I'm Lucinda, and if you haven't subscribed already, please do so and select the bell for notifications. Well, first, I want to thank all my awesome Patreon members who help make it possible to create videos like this. Well, thank you guys so much. And if you're interested in supporting me on Patreon, just go to patreon.com slash organized planner chic. Okay, you guys, I have a DIY traveler's notebook for you and we are going to be reusing some packaging. Yes, so, you know, it's important to reduce our waste and then to reuse whatever we do purchase to help our planet, our environment, all that good stuff and then recycle uh, if we're if it's possible and of course you can recycle a cardboard box but why not make something really fun out of it so i am using as you can see here a box that used to have crackers in it and what i did is i cut the spine down i made it a little bit narrower because it was really pretty wide and then i did that off camera and so i cut cut that i cut the top and the sides of the box all except for the pieces that you see here so then what i needed to do was tape the spine back together so i'm just using some dollar tree masking tape all i did is i took a piece of tape and I laid it across one of the pieces that I needed to tape together where it was the cardboard was in the center of the tape vertically and then I took the other piece and I laid it on top of that tape right next to the other piece of cardboard so that I could position it a little bit more easily and now what I need to do is mark where I want my pockets to fold in. So the width of these two pieces on either side of my spine are not wide enough for the size pockets that I want. So what I'm doing is I am just taking my ruler and marking the width of the so how I want to say it, marking the width of the sides of the traveler's notebook, the front and the back. And then I, and I use the traveler's notebook that you see at the top of the screen there on the left as my reference. Now I also have templates that I've created over the years, but you know, it was just easier for me to just pull this one out because it's designed the same way. It's also from an old cardboard box. So I marked on either side where that sits and I'm just positioning it again just to double check that's what I was doing right there and then I am going to lay or fold up the pieces like I'm doing right here and just mark with my ruler where it's not even so as you can see when I lay my ruler on there uh, the both ends are lined up with the ruler but there's some cardboard sticking out right there and so I'm just taking my pen and marking that so that I can cut that off and we're going to work on the pockets um, here in a little bit to expand them. So I marked where the pockets will go, but we're going to add some more cardboard. And I'll show you that in a little bit to make the pockets wider. So right now we're just setting everything up. I'm using some binder clips to help hold the box still so that I can have a nice even cut where I've marked. And that's what we're doing right there, y'all. Yeah, and so then the top and the bottom should be pretty even, but every time I do something new, tape a new piece or something, I always double check and then I make adjustments. So now we're just going to look, open that up and check again to make sure everything is the way I want it. But also now I needed to mark my height because the box is a little too tall. And so I'm just sitting the other traveler's notebook as my reference on top of the box and marking where I want to cut. So I just did it across the center so I knew that I would probably have a pretty straight line. And then I'm taking my ruler, which this is a beautiful green ruler that I got from the 99 cent store that I shared in a haul recently. So yeah. And yeah, I'm just moving it down a little bit further to have a nice straight line. I totally forgot that I had an 18 inch ruler as well. I'm going to bring it out later in the video. That would have made it easier for me to draw my straight line. You know, sometimes we forget, oh, I have something for that. <laughs> okay, so now these are two other pieces of cardboard that were the sides 
the narrow side, kind of a spine side of other projects that I did. So I save all these cardboard pieces. Anytime I have a cardboard box, I save it so that I can use it for other projects. Now, this process of combining the two pieces is the same as I did earlier. So while I do that, I'm going to talk to you guys about some updates to my channel. And if uh, anything that I'm doing during this time doesn't make sense, just let me know in the comments below and I promise I'll explain it to you. So I have been really fighting, really fighting God and him telling me that I need to go to more consistently just once a week for my videos. Not that I'll never have two videos a week, but that I need to, and sometimes when I get real busy or get sick or something, you guys know I've just done one video that week instead of two, but nine times out of 10, I do two videos a week. But I really feel like God has been trying to tell me that I need to just do one to help balance uh, a lot of different things. So one thing is I do a lot of DIYs. I mean, most of my videos are DIYs. They take a lot of time, which I love doing them. But even when I'm finished doing the project, the product, you know, the project, yeah, then I have a lot of editing to do. And unless I just make everything completely in real time, which would make all of my videos way too long. I mean, it's okay to have an hour long video every once in a blue moon, but I can't have them that long every time. And so, um, and then still there's just things like where your camera keeps adjusting or you lost some footage or whatever, or, um, or you had to redo some footage or you, um, just some weird technical problem that you're having with your editing and your software. I mean, just all kinds of things even add to the length of that time. And so I love the experience. I love the creativity that goes into making the videos and editing them and, and doing my best to have a really good product, but it takes a lot of time. And so then I try to not do two DIYs per um, oh, let me explain what I'm doing right here and then I'll talk some more. So I'm taking that 18 inch ruler and I'm positioning it on the line that I've marked where I wrote here on both sides as where I needed to fold in the cardboard to make my pocket. Because again, remember I added more cardboard to make my pocket wider. And so I'm gonna do that on both sides and then after I fold it, I see that my sides aren't straight either. So I'm going to mark those and cut those as well. So yeah, so the time it takes to do DIYs and so sometimes what I would try to do is just do a DIY one day of the week and then do something like a um, haul or something that I could be doing facing the camera or just something simple that required a lot less editing. But then I would just feel sometimes that I'm just trying to come up with something to fill in to, to make two videos that week. I mean, I, I would really think it out and I would plan for the week, but they weren't always necessarily what I felt like was, um, I don't know, I just felt like they weren't always what could have been my best. And so there was a time where I used to do three videos a week and then I had to back up and say, you know, you can't keep doing three videos a week, you need to do two because I really wanted to grow my channel. And so then I went to two and then but then I started doing what after I went to two I started doing more and more DIYs because that's really why most of you guys like my channel is for the DIYs and I like doing the DIYs and so um, it's just gotten to be um, it, I, I feel like I'm rushing trying to do two videos a week where I really should be just fully enjoying the experience of one really good detailed beneficial DIY or you know one week I could be doing still a haul like a big haul um, or or some other type of video like some of my favorites or whatever um, but do do something once a week that I can really put a lot of thought into and do and I do but do an even better job just an even better job where I feel balanced and, and it's hard to balance the rest of my life when I'm trying to do um, videos that require a lot of editing twice a week. And so I just don't feel balanced. I feel rushed. 
I feel like um, I feel I feel stressed. I do right now. Plus, it's tax season, and that adds more stress for me. Um, being an entrepreneur and all of that, and all the paperwork I have to have together, and then it's hard to have the time to do that to keep up with it during the year while. I'm trying to do two detailed videos with lots of editing um, a week. So I said all that to say that I am uh, going to consistently just do one do video a week and sometimes do two. You know, when, however it leads, however God leads it, however it works out, I might have bought something that I want to do an unboxing or what have you. So, and let me know also in the comments below how you guys feel about that and let me know what you want to see you know am i doing what you would want to do for a once a week video and uh, let me know that in comments you guys thank you and thank you for supporting me and so what i'm doing right now this is dollar not dollar tree this is duck brand um duct tape <laughs> and it is not your dollar tree brand so i never really thought about it. i guess i haven't bought duck brand the really good quality strong thick duct tape in a long time I've done so many things with Dollar Tree duct tape and the Dollar Tree duct tape is a lot thinner it's still good but it's not as thick not as strong as duck brand and so it takes some force to get it off the roll and to spread it out onto the cardboard so take your time you won't always be able to get it perfectly straight it's so much easier to get the Dollar Tree duct tape straight on a project than it was this tape so what I decided to do instead of putting the tape oh and by the way I've done duct tape travelers notebooks before that I've showed you guys after I completed them but I didn't show you actually this process of doing them and those all had Dollar Tree duct tape I think yeah I think so um, and so what I'm doing here in the inside for the area that the pocket is going to cover, I'm not going to use duct tape in the areas that it's not going to be showing. I am going to tuck it in. I did tuck it in a little bit under the pocket to make sure that no cardboard shows at all. But I didn't feel the need to put it all over the inside and in the areas that you're never going to see with the pocket. I can just save that for another project. And so then if you want it to look completely smooth and flat like I've done in other projects, you would line your duct tape right up against the edge of the other strip. But I wanted to have more of a layered look on this project, more sort of a three, 3D kind of thing, you know, uh, with more texture. Not that duct tape doesn't have plenty of texture, but it's still, the print is pretty flat. So, um, so I am layering mine over about a fourth of, a quarter of an inch over the edge, um, you know, overlapping the previous strip on my project. And so yeah, so that's what we've done now. What I'm doing right there is I'm overlaying a strip around the sides of, uh, of the pocket so that everything looks really smooth, that there's no cardboard showing up anywhere and that everything just looks, you know, kind of professional, yeah. So I'm just gonna cut the end of that and of course I'm gonna do that on both sides um, and just fold it over so that it just looks really neat y'all and there's probably i'm trying to think did i exactly do things in this order last time probably not you know but you know i don't think there's a perfect way to do this but this was the way i did it and so now i'm just overlaying strips on the top and the bottom of each pocket as well so it's the exact same process yeah and then I'll just fold that over I think I only showed me doing it on one this time but sometimes the tape sticks out or I didn't get it quite straight on there so I just cut the end like I did right there and then I'll just fold that up and you guys I had to do <laughs> quite a bit of editing on this video in terms of what was all in frame because I started this project one day and continued it a different day and I totally forgot to put my hair up and so my locks if you're not aware I have dreadlocks and they were just 
hanging into the frame and I wouldn't even notice that when I was working on the project so I was like this looks so weird because you can't see all of my head you just see these things dangling yeah so I had to edit all that okay so now let's see what am I doing right here okay so now that I've done the tops and the bottoms wrapped that around with duct tape and the sides of the pockets now I'm layering and I just decided to speed this up I'm layering on top of the parts of the pocket that you still see the cracker box yeah so and this was a little bit of a struggle to get it straight get the tape straight so I kept having to pull it back a little bit and roll it back up but eventually I was able to get them all there and and because I was doing the layered look I didn't worry about if there was like a little strip sticking out um, in terms of the different layers that you see like maybe there was a shorter layer that you could see under a longer layer I was like this is totally fine because I'm doing the layered look no biggie so if you're doing this and you're going edge to edge just realize if you're using the duct tape brand that you're gonna probably have to redo a few <laughs> to get it um, to look like you want it to look but if you're less worried about that it'll be a much better experience and just you know enjoy wrapping that tape around but if you have Dollar Tree tape you will absolutely be able to get it to look exactly the way you want it to much easier okay and I just love this duct tape I also had it in um, a haul actually I think it was that same haul that I just did with that had the green ruler because I love pink and green yeah and I mentioned in that video that I wasn't sure if the silver ruler I already had was going to fit in my go bag but it did yes yay so that works perfectly because my shorter ruler I lost somehow I'm sure it's not lost I'm sure it's just in something and I can't remember where I stuck it you know so yeah so now I'm just cutting the edge I really probably didn't need to do that because uh, one of the strips that I overlaid on the pocket I, I didn't get it straight enough to not be sticking over and so I'm trimming it I'm sorry you probably can't see part of that but all I had to do really was just wrap it up oh, there was a little piece of my locks there <laughs> <laughs> that popped into the frame so yeah everything is taped up and then I'm just going to put the holes in it to make it a traveler's notebook and I always just share a link to a video I created specifically on how to thread your elastic for your traveler's notebook so I will link that in the description for below for you guys it's just really simple it's just a little bit over two minutes long and his, here's the final product you guys I realized afterwards that I totally forgot to make um, pin loops for this traveler's note because I 99% of the time make DIY pin loops but I will do that later because I want to use a really dark purple for um, the pin loops and not the exact same fabric and uh, exact same duct tape and I don't have any light purple duct tape either so I'm gonna add those later but this is how it all looks you guys I used some Dollar Tree elastic that I had which is super thin so eventually I'm gonna replace that because it's just not strong elastic I added a Dollar Tree tassel Dollar Tree pom-pom and then this little charm was from oh shine sticker studio that I've had for ages well, while you guys look at that I want to thank you so much for joining me today thank you for listening to me tell you my story and explain the changes to my channel if you're new to my channel welcome 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 I hope you will stay with the family you guys I really enjoyed this product project and I really enjoy sharing these experiences with you guys you are the best all right okay so I want to let you know I am on Instagram at organized planner chic where I post all of my creative ventures and adventures. So check me out there if you haven't already. And then I have two Facebook groups. The one for anyone around the world is called Organize Planner Chic Crew. And there we do giveaways and we try to stay in touch just about every day with all different types of posts. And then we have, or I have a local Facebook group called Phoenix Planner Friends for Christ. And there we meet in person once a month. Oh, my locks are sticking out. <laughs> 
Sorry about that, you guys. So we normally meet in person once a month. We didn't for a whole year once COVID hit and everything shut down was March of 2020. We were only doing everything on Facebook and now we are able to meet again. We are meeting today. I'm so excited. We're meeting out at a park so it'll still be safe for anyone concerned. I got my first COVID shot by the way you guys through the VA and I'll get my second one on April 2nd and then two weeks after that that I'll be fully vaccinated. Let me know if you've gotten the vaccine or if you're thinking about it or thinking about not doing it or what. Tell me in the comments below you guys and then if you are interested in supporting me on Patreon just go to patreon.com slash organized planner chic and until next time everyone happy planning